Well, as you know, expect from you both, you obey me instructions at all times. When I tell you to break, you both break clean. Defend yourselves at all times, and the best luck to you both. The touch gloves. Well done, let's come. So great support in here tonight for Dublin's Pierce O'Leary. It's got the makings of a good fight, this one. Big bang against Bezix Kane Gardner. O'Leary unbeaten, but he could face a decent test here, Richie, against this Lancastrian who's confident and feels tonight. Could be a statement night for him. On paper, it's a good contest, isn't it? I think Kane just slightly the taller of the two. O'Leary, very skillful boxer indeed. But Kane himself, you know, won his last four and uh, he's on a good run of form. So I've been looking forward to this one. Um, I think it's um, an even match, this one is. So the mainly green trunks of T.S. O'Leary, trimmed with gold, the black and red for Kane Gardner. Seven stoppages in 12 fights for the man from Dublin. Two defeats for Gardner, but he disputes the both of them. O'Leary stopped five of the last six opponents he's faced, the exception being the awkward, tough Namibian Emmanuel Mungangela last November. He followed that up with a one-round blowout in Belfast on the Michael Conlon bill in May, and he can be very explosive. Certainly a scouting mission up to now, especially for Gardner, just staying on the outside. And Leary just missing with that left hook, a little bit too far out. But just having a look at each other here. Gardner just content to stay on the outside and take a look at his opponent. So not a lot happened at this stage, uh, Fletch. There's a switch hitter, O'Leary, so you'll see him box from the orthodox stance and from the southpaw stance as well. And he's being roared on by uh, quite a few supporters here inside the OVO Arena here at Wembley. The WBC International Super Lightweight title on the line, over ten rounds here tonight. And it's been a fact-finding mission for both of them, as Richie Woodall points out here in the first round. First good body shot there, dug in by O'Leary, the right hand behind the elbow. Yeah, quick injection of pace there from O'Leary, and then just switches downstairs with that backhand. That's a really good body shot that just had Gardner off balance, forced him back into the corner, he's quickly up on his toes again. He's got a lot of power, Pierce O'Leary, we know that. He has, but the, the problem for, for Gardner there was he's coming square too often. Um, and that's what happens when you come square. You haven't got that rear leg behind you, and so you, you can't really take a shot. It was a good shot, there's no doubt. But um, he was off balance a little bit because of those square feet. Right hand there from O'Leary as well, who's been the aggressor in the opening round. Gardner's been on the back foot in the main. He will be very respectful of the power that O'Leary possesses. O'Leary just started to settle here towards the end of this first round, and there's the bell. Alan Smith doing the talking in the O'Leary corner as we take a look at that body shot, Richie. Cracking shot, wasn't it? Just under the, the right left elbow of uh, Gardner. Well, like I say, he's a bit off balance, but the, I mean, he's sort of falling back anyway. But nevertheless, a, a cracking shot, best shot of the round. And it was an O'Leary round, no question. Gardner had a good win against Connor Walker in his last fight. Walker, who's since bounced back himself with a decent victory. His two defeats are to Ben Fields and Tom Farrell. But he's here tonight, having won his last four. And Alan Smith, O'Leary's trainer, says that he's big at the weight, he's a decent boxer, and he's got the ability to stay in rounds and stay in fights, and that's something that O'Leary's got to guard against tonight. But he's 
The fighter coming forward here, O'Leary, and he's the one who settled the quicker and, and throwing the better punches. What I like about O'Leary, when he's coming forward on that front foot, he keeps that head moving, which is good, so he's anticipating the jab from his opponent. If the, if the opponent throws the shot, then he can slip the shot and then come back with the counter. So head movement going forward, it's counter-punching basically on the front foot. You anticipate the jab, if the jab comes, then you can whip a shot over the top by just avoiding that punch. So it's better work from O'Leary, more positive on the front foot. Kane uh, Gardner's got to be a little bit more positive. Now and again, counter-attack. So beat O'Leary to the punch, step forward occasionally. He's still sort of on that outside, taking a look at O'Leary. He's got to be a little bit more positive. And Gardner not particularly wanting to overcommit himself in the early stages here, as Richie said, staying on the outside and staying away from the power shots of Pierce O'Leary. O'Leary always busy, always moving, rolling the shoulders, moving the head, trying to stick that right hand through, but the guard held high there by Gardner. You see, what, it, what would make it a little bit more awkward for O'Leary is if, if Gardner was to just stay in the centre of the ring more or box in the ring space, because he keeps drifting back to the ropes, his feet come square, then he becomes open and O'Leary seizes the opportunity and just um, gets on that front foot and, and backs him up. This is an example here. So Gardner's got to be a little bit more switched on with his movement rather than moving back to the ropes, move in the spaces of the ring, See, he's back on the ropes now, he's more vulnerable, gets caught. That's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. You just see some slight distress on the face of Kane Gardner as he moved away. Throws a lot of heavy punches when he gets up close, Pierce O'Leary. We've seen him be very spectacular since he came under the Queensbury banner. He was uh, very much on an upward trajectory after a good amateur career. He stayed at the Two Doves pub in Bromley. He's away from his family for most of the year, away from his partner, Amy, and his young daughter, Effie, whose name he has on the front of his trunks tonight, sacrifices he's prepared to make as he chases his dream of winning a world title. Body shot right at the end of that second round from O'Leary. Right, you got my little left foot just took him off balance ah. with one, didn't you? But well, think about it, we'll start getting some right use at now, because we haven't shown him anything at the moment. No, no, we know we're on, yeah. I know, that's what we're saying. Yeah. You're only on two, but he might have won that round and that yeah, round, that you know what I mean? Well, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 we know you know what you're doing, but we need it. You know, we need that jab double. That was a bit better than the first round. Yeah, 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 you're building up and building up. Well, we don't want to leave it. You've got a lot to long, guys. No, we don't. Got another eight rounds yet, you know what I mean? And these kids not really done anything. Let's go, guys. I'm up. Yeah. Ian Harrison doing the talking in Kane Gardner's corner. The main message, Richie, was that you've shown oh, Pierce O'Leary nothing as yet, and you've essentially allowed the first two rounds to drift by. Yeah, he's, he's let them slip, hasn't he? There were glimpses in that round of what he should be doing. He landed a couple of good jabs, but then he's back on the back foot, and again, straight away, he's on the outside of the ring again. So he needs... We spoke about it, he's got to be a little bit more positive. Why not put O'Leary on the back foot occasionally, counter-attack and put him under a little bit of pressure? At the moment, it's Gardner back on the outside. I think Gardner boxes well at range, but uh, like I said, he just drifts onto the ropes, and that's when he's vulnerable. O'Leary, the man applying all of the early pressure in the opening couple of rounds of this fight. He's been the boxer coming forward, boxing on the front foot, throwing the majority of the punches, that one body shot that sneaked through in the first round, the most significant up to now. That's a good long right hand, though, that managed to find the target. Yep, nice shot there from O'Leary. Really putting his work together well now. So he's just stepping up a little bit. This is going to test Gardner. What can he come back with? One of those fighters, Richie, who wants to be explosive. He needs no encouragement, does he, O'Leary, to really open up and let the punches go. That's going to be a constant issue, I think, all the way through the fight here for Gardner. Body shot while he got his back to the ropes from Pierce O'Leary. I 
a little bit better from Garner, those straight shots. And again, the movement, that Fetis, he's moving around O'Leary. Rather than moving back, but soon he's back onto the ropes. And he really has got to watch what he's doing. You know, I don't mind boxers who box on the, the outside of, of the ring, but occasionally you've got, to, you've got to put the opponent under a little bit of pressure as well and just show the, the, the judges and the referee, if he's judging the contest, that, you know, you're prepared to put him under pressure and push the opponent back. Difficult to, to, to win a contest totally on the back foot if your opponent keeps coming forward and pushing you back to the ropes. Really good for his shot. Take a well by Gardner. And the problem here for him, though, is he allowed the first three rounds to drift away. At some stage, he's got to start showing a lot more than he has done to this stage. Maybe that's all part of the plan. Maybe he's got something up his sleeve for the second half of the fight. But O'Leary, at this rate, he's just going to keep coming forward and keep throwing shots. Well, there's no respect from O'Leary at all, is there? There's nothing coming back from, from Gardner to trouble O'Leary. And I think Gardner's got a decent right hand, but he's rarely thrown it. And he's got to hit the target maybe with that shot and um, just, just gain the respect of O'Leary. But up to now, O'Leary's boxing a good fight here. He's won the first three rounds. Well, there's the exciting big man who's in next, Moses Itauma, the 18-year-old from Chatham. Fifth fight tonight since turning professional, six rounds against Amin Busetta. And he said yesterday at the weigh-in that he's had enough of these points victories, he wants another stoppage tonight, he's going in there with bad intentions and he always has that game face on. Very skillful kid, isn't he, and very young, very talented indeed, massive future. But yeah, he wants the stoppage tonight, looking forward to seeing him, Fletch. It's going to be a sellout here tonight at the Obo Arena. Every seat will be taken by the time Gilles Zhang and Joe Joyce make their way to the ring for the main event a little bit later on. This is the fourth scheduled for ten between Dublin's Pierce O'Leary and Bezik's Kane Gardner for the WBC International Super Lightweight title with O'Leary defending the belt. Good body shot to start the fourth round from the Dubliner. Will we see a change in tactic from Gardner? He's keeping the guard nice and high, but again, he's been pushed back time and again to the ropes. He's got to start concentrating on that central position there and, and using the ring space a little bit better. There you go, moving around O'Leary. That's better movement. He's got to punch off that now, Kane okay, Gardner, and avoid going back to those ropes. It's intelligent boxing at this stage from O'Leary because he's got that one-punch knockout power, but he's got the guard that high, hasn't he, Gardner, that the body's open, it's there for him, and he's been happy to use it. Yeah, he's having to, to look for the shots, isn't he? So, what, I, what I like about O'Leary also, though, Fletch, he, he works downstairs, so he's just trying to bring those elbows down of his opponent. And that's what he's got to do here, that's a nice shot, lovely counter there. Yeah, really good O'Leary. right hand from O'Leary, just has Gardner going backwards again, there's another right whipped over the top, little grin on the face, he said, I'm OK. Body shot, O'Leary just started to tighten the screw, raise the tempo, lift the pressure, and ask the questions. So far, though, bouncing off Kane Gardner. Body shot again, this has been a good start to this round from O'Leary. O'Leary boxing well, but occasionally you see a glimpse of what Gardner should be doing, he's a decent long-range puncher, and that's what he's got to do. There you go, that's a little bit better, and again from Gardner. But the movement's important, Fletch, you must move around O'Leary, keep that guard high. Again, back onto the ropes, not a good place to be. It's been a dominant round, this one, from O'Leary. Good work again, two-punch combination, might well have blocked them. Good shot, left hand. Gardner took it well. It's the first round in the fight, though, where you really start to feel that the power shots are starting to take effect. 
Good shot there from Garvin, and a nice little left up. If you watch O'Leary as he's coming forward, he's very dominant, he's winning this contest, but he keeps dropping his right hand. He's open to a left hook occasionally, O'Leary, when he's in at more mid, short and mid-range. His right hand's fairly low, and we've seen a glimpse there of, of Gardner landing the odd left hook. So that's going to be interesting as this contest goes on. Final few seconds of the fourth round. Pierce O'Leary continues to be the aggressor. That's better though from Gardner, putting the punches together right at the end of the round. Welcome back to Wembley Arena, with the seats starting to fill. And we've got Dublin's Pierce O'Leary and Fezix Kane Gardner in the ring. Frank Warren said he'd happily put O'Leary in with either the British champion Dalton Six Smith or the highly rated Adam oh. Azim, and he expects him to be making an impact on the world scene before too long as well. Before all that, though, he's got to get through this one tonight. He started well into the fifth of ten. And I think it's pretty fair to say that he's won all of the rounds so far, O'Leary. He, he has indeed. Dalton Smith, quality kid he is. I remember him up at GB. Obviously, British and Commonwealth champion now, I think, Dalton. Quality boxer, so that would be uh, one to look forward to if O'Leary uh, got to grips with that one. If that could be made in the future, certainly. He's got to get through this one first. And glimpses in that previous round, Gardner landed the odd shot, probably didn't do enough to win the round, but nevertheless, he's sort of finding a way and he's getting more confident now. That's not a bad shot there from Gardner. Little smile from Gardner as O'Leary landed. The heavy shot at the end of that three-punch combination. That's a good jab, though, that snapped the head of the Irishman back from Gardner. Yeah, change of tactic now from Gardner. Quite clearly, stop the movement. He's trying to block the shots as O'Leary's coming forward, and then coming back with the odd counter. He's also counter-attacking, beating O'Leary to the punch now and again. So, like I said, he's growing in confidence, taking the shots on the elbows and the arms, and, look, and coming back with some decent punches of his own. And the movement stops yet, changing tactic, and occasionally it's working here. First time in the fight, really, that we're seeing some sort of rhythm here from Gardner. O'Leary continues to throw a high volume of punches, continues to ask the questions, but it's better this from Gardner. Needed to be, though, Richie, because he's a long way behind. Yes, he did. He did indeed. He's got a decent right hand, but this is the... In these situations here, Fletch, he could land this left hook. Again, O'Leary keeps that right hand of his pretty low. So when Gardner gets up close, he could land that left hook. It's a more, it's a different looking Gardner. This there, it was there, that's not too far out. Yeah, it's a fight that's warming up nicely now. It was one way traffic for O'Leary. Gardner showing signs of dragging himself back into it. Is there a cut for O'Leary? Yeah, slight cut on the left eye of O'Leary. So there a bit of damage there. Yeah, blood started to flow. You wonder whether that can spur Gardner on. Yeah, there's a look of confidence now with Gardner, the way he's coming forward. This is going to test O'Leary now. It's been all O'Leary up to now, but again, there's the left up we spoke about. Really good work it. from Gardner. Just stopped O'Leary in his tracks. The first time that he's really had to take a backward step. With blood flowing from his left eye, there are questions all of a sudden for Pierce O'Leary to answer. And it's exactly what Alan Smith said, he's got the ability to stay in rounds and stay in fights. That's what Kane Gardner does, and we're seeing it here again tonight. Best round for Gardner here, by far. So there's work to do now in the Pierce O'Leary corner to stem the flow of blood from that cup. Which is right on the island, right. I think, Richie. You made hard work of that. So what I would do this round, kid? Okay. Slow down. What he's done is pulled you into that fight. Look, he's just sit and play with him. You 
got to roll like that. Draw him onto a little bit, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Not enough, is it? That's a really it's bad position. Cut Fletch, where it is. There you go. You are right? John Latham signalled as well, Richard, that it was caused by a punch. Then, and then he's drawn to into it. When he wants to fight, go on your back foot, draw him in with your, your tight defence. Then all of a sudden, go up and down. First time Come I've on, heard any concern again. in that corner. Indeed. Chin gets back to the garden and it paid off. Six. So let's see where the gardener can build on what was his best round of the fight in the fifth. He's behind on the cards. But there's still plenty of time in this fight. Round six, scheduled for ten. It was all one-way traffic until the previous round. That's the way that Carl Frampton's got it. He gave Gardner his first round in the fifth, so he's behind on the cards, but maybe he can start to kick on from here. Yeah, he's just a, a total look, a uh, different look to Gardner's work now and the confidence. And there's the left hook again to the body. The, for me, O'Leary's got to keep his hands higher when he's in punching range. When Gardner comes in, he seems to be landing shots, but a lot of the time it's O'Leary with the low guard, especially the right hand. What an interesting contest. This is going to really test O'Leary now, Fletch. Yeah, this is really going to boil up. And I mean, it wasn't in the early stages a case of Gardner not being able to land punches. He simply wasn't throwing any. But now he's starting to stand his ground and let his hands go. He's having more success, although that was a decent uppercut there from O'Leary. Belting shot, that was. From O'Leary, well-timed uppercut. And yeah, just to change it in tactic. And maybe he was thinking about this all along. But Gardner, I think... Different look to this boxer, and he's got that still that high guard. He's trying to block shots. Yeah, which has been that left up. Right? He's been pretty good at blocking shots, hasn't he, all the way through? O'Leary continues to throw the punches, but we're starting to see Gardner come forward and have more success, spurred on no doubt by the cut that O'Leary suffered in the previous round. Much more even contest now. Yeah, this is where Garner's probably got to get his timing better with his jab again. He's got the height and reach, remember. But that's all oh, that shot is caught by a sweeping hook as he was moving along the ropes. The legs are betraying him. Survival mode for Gardner. O'Leary, we know he's a great finisher. Chasing Gardner around the ring on unsteady legs. Best punch of the fight from Pierce O'Leary just at a time when Gardner was having his success. And probably only we needed it because Gardner was clawing his way back into this contest, but that punch has changed everything in this round. 30 seconds to go in the sixth, and Gardner waiting for the head to clear, trying to stay out of range. O'Leary knows he could be a big shot away from really turning this fight in his favour. And he's still not recovered, and Gardner Fletch on the outside. Well, he's smiling again, but he knows just how hurtful that punch was. That was a fraction low, straight below the belt line from O'Leary. But he is going to hear the bell, and that's going to come as a mighty relief to Kane Gardner. Get the body and then come over the oh. top. Take deep breath, come on. Suck it. What's your breathing? Slow it down. Let's have a look at it here. It's a long shot, isn't it? And it's sort of on the temple and high, higher on the head. And the legs went, didn't they? And Kane Gardner was in all sorts of trouble. O'Leary trying to move in. See there, it's a temple shot, if anything. And they are the worst punches, Fletch. He just can't. He really scrambles the senses. And it took a while here for Kane Gardner to get to back to grips with it. Literally ran for his life. O'Leary trying to land big shots, but he's got through it. Oh. Wow, that was, a, that was a big round for O'Leary. It was. It's going to be fascinating yeah. now to see just how much his head's cleared in the minute between the rounds. Ian Harrison's been offering encouragement in there. Here they come then for the seventh, scheduled for ten. Big round, the last one for Pierce O'Leary. Just when you felt the fight could potentially be turning Kane Gardner's way, he lands that big left hand to get himself back in the driving seat. And it's back to the tactic of on the outside for Gardner which didn't really work for him in the early part of the contest. It was the changing tactic when he started to go forward 
and um, take O'Leary on a little bit more. That paid dividends, but now probably still not fully recovered. Back on the outside, and O'Leary again looks in charge. Being chased down in there by O'Leary, who lands the body shot. It's the beauty of having genuine power in both hands that when things start to potentially turn against you, you've got the leveller. Good shot by O'Leary. Gardner with his back to the ropes, felt the full force of that one. Survival mode again. Talk about a punch changing the whole complexion of the contest. Well, certainly the way it was going at that stage. Mark Gardner was very confident, but that left up from O'Leary. And he still is not recovered, Gardner. You can, you can quite clearly see back on the outside, trying to keep his distance. He can't fend O'Leary off. And again, O'Leary coming forward with a lot of confidence. Very confident indeed for Dubliner. Halfway through the seventh round. Two good left jabs, piercing the guard of Gardner. Right hand followed up as well by O'Leary. Nothing really coming back from Gardner in this round as he continues to try and clear his head. I think it's knocked his confidence as well, Gardner. Fletch back on the outside. There was a totally different look about him a couple of rounds ago before that punch. He was coming forward and he looked like he was turning the contest. But um, confidence affected. Although well, that's a little bit better. Into the final minute, seventh round. O'Leary still looks full of energy in there, despite the fact he's thrown so many punches tonight. Right hand lands again from the Dubliner. with two shots there, Gardner. O'Leary looking to land punches with power. But another good round here for Pierce O'Leary. Yeah, and that showed the confidence there, O'Leary. Two right hands straight after one another. And he's supremely confident, the Irishman, at the end of the round. So there is Gilet Zhang, and Steve Gray is just showing exactly what a low blow is going to be. I'm glad we're seeing that tonight. <laughs> Final instructions, rules being outlined, and then the serious preparation for the big man from China will begin. Top of the bill tonight, Joyce Zhang too. Can't wait. But a good one here, though, Rich. Yeah, it um, turned out to be a good contest, this. He looked at one-way traffic at one stage, then Kane Garner seemed to gain a bit of confidence. Oh, he's 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 quite a bit of damage around the face of Kane Gardner now as well. And the corner, in fairness, have done a, a relatively decent job on the eye, but, of course, he's not been throwing punches to make it any worse, has he, Gardner, no. based on the fact that O'Leary's been the man in charge. Three to go. You feel from this point on, Richie, Gardner has to come forward, has to take chances, has to throw punches. Yes, he's got to, he's got to get a confidence booster as well. I think his confidence, like you said, has been affected from that shot earlier on. But he's got through that, he's weathered the storm. And now, this is where he pay, paid dividends for him, when he held his, his ground a little bit more and met O'Leary um, head-on. He seemed to have more success. So it'll be interesting, to, to, it's a real test of his character here now. Kane Gardner, but that's quality there from O'Leary, good, good work. Pierce O'Leary very much the boss in there. Decent shot though by Gardner. O'Leary responds with a punch back to the body. Has to start putting shots together, Gardner. O'Leary though still the aggressor. Bobbing and weaving in front of his opponent. That's good work there from O'Leary. He's trying to anticipate work shots coming at him. 
when he's seeing that's outside, good. Look at that. That's yeah. good work. When he's seeing outside the ring, Richie, he doesn't strike you as a professional boxer. Softly spoken, mild mannered. Keeps his thoughts to himself when he's at the weigh-in and the press conference, but he changes dramatically when he gets in there. And a good response, though, in this round from Gardner. Just one or two signs that he's waking up again. O'Leary with a bit of showboating with his back to the ropes, trying to then respond with a left hook off there. Minutes to go in the eighth round. WBC International Super Lightweight belt on the line. Holder Pierce O'Leary with what we suspect is quite a sizable lead. Yes, I think he's running front, but Gardner showing some good signs in this round that he's recovered from that earlier um, shot um, in the previous round that he really struggled with. He's come through it well now, so it's a little bit better from him. And this has been a really decent uh, workout for both boxers, especially for O'Leary also. And um, it'll be interesting to see the last couple of rounds who can just turn it on a little bit. Because Gardner will have to really go all out to try and turn this one around because he's well behind. Him. Full credit to Gardner for the resilience he's shown tonight. Took him a couple of rounds to get over that sweeping left hand that had him wobbling all over the ring. O'Leary continues to put the punches together. Final few seconds of this one. And there's the bell. Starting to get to work in the Joe Joyce dressing room. Won't be long before he starts to wrap the hands. Won't be long before he starts to get himself ready for what has to be the biggest fight of his professional life, his career hanging in the balance, his career on the line tonight against Zilei Zhang. One thing Joe Joyce cannot afford tonight is another defeat. Now, 38 years of age, he must win this one. He knows what he's got to do. I think he'll, he, they, they will know what they did wrong last time. They've got to put it right this time. They've got to box differently, basically. Got to move his head a little bit more. He's got to box with a faster pace, faster feet. It's going to be interesting, but it's a hard Four fight. Minutes, ten seconds. I think one thing we're all pretty confident about is it can't be a bad fight you talk about styles no. making fights i can't imagine it's going to be anything other than exciting can you someone's going to be on the receiving end fletch so two to go here and i think everybody's in agreement as well that kane gardner needs a big finish from somewhere yeah he needs a massive finish two rounds uh, to go but he's well behind but um it'll be a test for him now but also a test for um, o'leary can he get the stoppage here? Or will Kane Garner, can he change it around? With a couple of decent punches, let's see. It's easy to see why Gardner's never been stopped. The resilience and bravery that he's shown in there tonight, the ability to fight his way through a crisis. O'Leary's dream is to fight for a world title in Dublin at Croke Park, something that Muhammad Ali did against Al Blue Lewis back in 1972. Of course, he's a way away from that at the moment, but the more victories he piles up, the more he's going to move towards the world stage. And he's done tonight what he's needed to do in there, provided he can see it through. I think he's been tested here, hasn't he, O'Leary? Again, this round... Gardner's boxing fairly well, decent straight shots, the odd left hook here and there. There's a little bit more blood coming down the left cheek of O'Leary, so a little bit damaged there still. So, yeah, it has been um, a good test for O'Leary. Gardner now is um, he's, he's coming through and landing some better shots also. Blood just started to trickle down the side of O'Leary's face again from that cut on the eyelid, left eye, which hasn't become the kind of problem that it might have done just over a minute to go in the ninth good work from Gardner just showing some spirit himself he's got a bit of damage to his face too I think when you've got a man in there who's renowned as a puncher it's always good to see them in a fight like this to see how they respond against someone who's not just going to roll over and that's been the case here for O'Leary who's had to dig deep at times in the fight but he's He's come through this well to this point against a, a rugged and determined customer in Kane Gardner, who continues 
to try and find something that can turn it round in his way. Well, Gardner again, he's, he's doing okay in this round. Couple of good, decent right hands earlier from him, keeping the guard nice and high. There it was again. That wasn't too far away, but again, growing in confidence, uh, Gardner. The work rate of O'Leary's been impressive tonight. 20 seconds to go in the penultimate round. Clever there from O'Leary, just holding Gardner on the blind side, the referee. Tricks of the trade. There's a bit of damage to O'Leary's nose as well as his eye. Just seeing the blood start to flow from the nose towards the end of that one. Yeah, you did it three times, brilliant. Brill, you can do it. Should have done it earlier. Just go for it now. Don't like it. Doesn't like it. You could be rounds down, so you've got to go for it. Yeah, it was better work from Kane Gardner in this round. Coach Ian Harrison there just um, acknowledging that. Walks onto a good shot there. There's a couple of decent right hands from Gardner in, in this round, also. So, uh, Pierce O'Leary is really having to work here for the victory. Don't let this go. Well, that's the way that Carl Frampton has it. O'Leary, seven points on heading into the tenth and final round, just the fifth round given to Kane Gardner. I don't think you'd argue with that at all, Richie, would you? No. As I say, that he just lands a lovely right hand there, Gardner. Yeah. First punch of the last round. Needs a few more of those, doesn't he? Needs yes, a gigantic he finish here. Needs a stoppage. And for the first time in the fight, really, he's got O'Leary backed into a corner. Two good jabs in there from O'Leary. The story of the contest, really, though, Fletch, is that um, the one that one big shot that he found earlier on in, in the contest, O'Leary, and that sort of knocked the confidence totally out of um, Gardner, who was who was getting back into it. But having said that, up until then, O'Leary was in charge, yes, but um, it, it seemed to change the, the thinking and, and the momentum that was with Gardner at the time, and O'Leary got back into into a groove. But now here, Gardner's just having a um, Having a go in this last round, but O'Leary has been the better boxer throughout the contest, most certainly. Both men have suffered facial damage in there, the most significant, that cut over the eye for O'Leary that the corner team have done well with. Kind of fight where it's left me with blood on my notes, Richie, that's what it's been like. Gardner looking to target the body, knows he's got to land a fight-changing punch in the last 90 seconds here. O'Leary just feeling the pace a little bit here now. He's got to hold on on the inside. Good shot from Gardner and another one, right hand. Yeah. Spun the head round of O'Leary. Best punch he's thrown for quite some time, Gardner. Left up the glove before, that wasn't too bad. So Gardner having some success, confidence. O'Leary knows that he's just going to survive this round and uh, he'll win this one. But Gardner, on the other hand, feels that. He can stop maybe O'Leary. Yeah, full credit to Gardner for the way he's finishing the fight. O'Leary, though, digging deep himself and still has gas left in his tank. Blood flowing from the eye again of Pierce O'Leary. Nothing being left in there by both men. O'Leary jabbing and moving. Final 30 seconds. Gardner looking for the big shot. Both of them so tired in there. O'Leary just hitting and moving. Clever boxing. Hands very low. And his confidence is just evading the punches. But a good right hand again and again for the left from Gardner. Two really good shots. He's landed his best punches in the fight, in the final round. Screams at O'Leary. O'Leary wobbles on the round, showboating from him. Smiles and hugs. Fantastic contest between the pair of them. Uh, Pierce O'Leary. Will have come through a tough test there. Kane Gardner was rugged, he was determined, he was resilient.
He might well have been able to do more in the early rounds to give him a foothold in the fight, but he gave everything in that final round to try and turn the fight in his favour. But Tiers O'Leary, we suspect he's going to be announced as the winner by quite some significant margin, but that shouldn't detract from the bravery and resilience of Gardner towards the end. Terrific last round from Gardner, wasn't it? I think it... His corner knew he was well behind, they gave him instructions, he's gone out there and uh, tried to get the stoppage, really went for it, it was really entertaining. There was a good right hand from Gardner and another one, probably the best, that second one was the best shot that he's thrown in the contest. The reality is though, Richie, there weren't enough of those moments for Gardner at all. No, there wasn't, he probably showed uh, Pierce uh, O'Leary too much respect early on in the contest, he let the first three rounds just slip by, just staying on the outside. The changing tactic from Gardner to stand and hold his ground was much better for him. It paid dividends. And isn't it wonderful in this sport to see the two men with smiles on faces embrace each other like that after ten very hard rounds here in the ring at Wembley? That's why it's the best sport in the world, Fletch, you know. Two warriors in there, and at the end of it, arm in arm, appreciating both, both their um, efforts. Tremendous. Well, the judges are from Canada. Mexico and uh, Victor Lachlan as well. Thomas Triber just waiting for the judges' cards to be added up, all the totals given to him, and then he can give us the official result here. Up next tonight, you're going to see Moses Itauma, and still to come tonight, the return of Anthony Yard. First time we've seen him in the ring since he lost to Arta Betaviev, and then the top of the bill tonight, Gilet Zhang against Joe Joyce for the second time. Taking slightly longer here than we might have expected it to. Thomas Triber and the supporters inside Wembley Arena waiting patiently for the result. Yeah, it always makes you wonder, doesn't it, when um, there's a bit of a delay. But uh, for me, I think Prince O'Leary has won the contest um, by quite a wide margin, to be quite honest. But uh, full credit to Gardner. He certainly made a good last round. Yeah. But he didn't have too many of them. Let's, let's get it right. Yeah, we saw Carl Frampton's card before the final round and he'd only given Kane Gardner the fifth. And the rest of them had all been given to Pierce O'Leary. If you give Gardner the last round, it's still a wide margin victory for the man from Dublin. Indications are that we're just about there. OK, let's get the official result. The cards are in. Here's Thomas Driver. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Richard de Carufel scores it 100 to 90. And both judges, Omar Mintun Sr. and Victor Lachlan, are in agreement. They both score it the same 99 to 92. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And still. WBC International Super Lightweight Champion, Pierce Big Bang O'Leary. Well, Kane Gardner's face told you that he didn't necessarily agree with the judges' cards, but that's the way Carl Frampton had it. Pierce O'Leary with another victory.